Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I am so excited because I'm finally going to be sharing with you something that has literally been in the works I think all year at this point. And that is this. I know, wow, a white small container, how revolutionary. <laughs> but this is actually an extraordinarily compact palette that can hold 42 half pan size watercolors and two mixing dishes. There's been so much trial error and prototyping with this thing. There's just a lot of pieces involved and finally I am to the point that I am happy. This is technically my prototype but it is pretty much just the first version that I have made of what will be the final versions. The container itself you open up, it is a screw top lid and then the first thing that you see on top is one of the mixing areas which just in general the design I specifically had there be a hole in the center of all of the pieces so that you could easily take them out of this container. So there are two mixing trays that have a total of eight mixing areas and then underneath those two you have the first of the paint wells and then each layer there are three layers of paint wells each layer has 14 individual sections for color each of those paint well areas is almost the equivalent of an entire half pan of watercolor so being able to fit 42 half pans into this size palette I think is pretty good and I'm sure I'm going to insert better footage so that you can actually see this thing close up but this is something that I've been working towards adding to I guess my art supplies range for quite a while now even before I started actively designing it and prototyping it there had been quite a few comments from people and questions asking if I was ever going to create like a bigger travel palette the travel palette that is so popular which I can't believe that I make art supplies now as a part of my job so thank you all for being interested in these things that I design but this might be my favorite art supplies that I've designed, which is saying a lot because I thought that that brush storage was going to remain undefeated for a long time. The original travel palette holds 15 colors, so I was always looking at trying to expand upon that and I wasn't entirely sure if I wanted to do something that was like an extra large travel palette or just something that was like a more compact normal palette. You know something that could technically be your main watercolor palette but it is also compact and in a storage configuration that you could take it around if you ever needed to do that as well. And that is what this palette is. There's been so much design process. I was looking at the wells themselves, if I wanted them to be in a circular fashion, if I wanted the wells themselves to be circular, the mixing trays, how many times those would be separated. There was even at one point, which I have them here, that I was looking at making these tins, which I was then testing out different tins to look at as possible containers, which the problem with all of these, they are either too deep and just not compact enough. This was the best option that I found. But then these ones, the shipments that I kept on getting of them had dents in some of them. And that of course sort of defeated the purpose of looking at this being something that could be easily traveled with. So that is when I came up with this fully custom option. So it is fully 3D printed and customized to fit this design concept. I'm so happy that I finally have one to show you and that we're finally at the point that I am happy enough with this design and concept that I'm going to start making more of them. So this week's plan is going to be one to of course start actually making some of these because at this point I know if I just make something for myself there's going to be a variety of people in the comments asking when I'm going to sell it. So we're bringing a pro active this time. This is a little more of an unusual process because normally I'm going through the process I'm coming up with the design idea and designing it and everything but at this point it's just been so long <laughs> I'm like the work is done we're just going ahead with this final idea but those are the planned shenanigans of the week so I guess let's actually get into some palette making. As for I guess tradition at this point I'm going to turn this prototype into my own personal palette. Like I think I have mentioned this being the prototype it's literally the same as what the finished product uh, is at this point it's just the first version and 
I mean, there's a little bit of paint on this lid somehow, which is fun. <laughs> uh, but all of these pieces inside of stuff are exactly how they're going to be manufactured in the future. So what I'm going to do is I have 42 colors to choose from for this palette. So I'm going to go through my main swatch sheet. This is like my main watercolor palette and choose the colors that I want to include in this thing to, I guess, for me at least, to create a miniature version of my main favorite watercolor palette. I'm actually going to take a picture of this swatch sheet and then I guess like X off the colors that I want and then go find those colors and then start building this thing. When I was talking about creating my own palette, my mom came up with this really good idea of separating each layer into like a color scheme. So have there be like a warm color layer, a cool color, and then a neutral layer. And that's what I went with. So that is why you see me writing numbers down onto my swatch sheet. That's because layer one was going to be warm colors, two cool colors, and three neutral colors. There were a few colors, namely the purple that I wasn't entirely sure which layer they were going to fit into, so I marked them with a couple of numbers. But once I got all of my palette numbers figured out, I then went to try and find all of these paint colors, which was an ordeal because my like excess paint storage was absolutely not organized, but we finally figured out exactly what all of the colors were, and then I got them laid out in order so that I could start putting them in my palette. Something else I also wanted to mention, there is actually a top to these palette wells. One of the spokes on both of the rings lines up, and so that is what I'm calling the top, and that's how I was organizing my palette. So the first color was going to go to the right of that initial, like, center point. And I organized mine going all the way around the outside ring and then into the inside ring. This palette is meant for watercolor or gouache, but you really could do a combination of both. I just decided to go with a full watercolor, actually minus the white. I did end up using white gouache for that because I find myself grabbing white gouache quite a lot to like use for really stark highlights and stuff, and I just do not use white watercolor, so it just made way more sense for me to put white gouache in my palette instead. But obviously you could do a combination of both, like have two of your layers be watercolor and then the third one be gouache if that's like more of what you enjoy using for your work. You know, whatever suits your painting needs, preferences. I just went with watercolor because I actually keep on making gouache palettes. Uh, when I do like making these test ones, I've literally only ever made gouache ones, which is very unintentional uh, considering I generally do use watercolor more but that's just how it's ended up working out. So I'm very happy to finally have a watercolor palette that I've made. And I know I sort of skimmed over the entire design process and kept it pretty minimal considering this has been a very lengthy process, but if you're wondering why the 14 wells per layer, because it is kind of an unusual number, it's because when I was designing it, 14 meant that the outer ring wells and the inner ring wells are extremely, extremely close. I'm pretty sure they're not actually actually exact, but they are so close that you're not going to be able to tell a difference between the different ring sizes, which was important to me because obviously with the circumference difference between the rings, you are looking at a slightly different shape between the inner and outer ring wells, but I know the area inside is practically identical, which is what I was going for. So here's what my palette pieces are looking like. It has been a few hours. Actually, it's probably been like 24 hours since I filled these up and they're still pretty wet, so I'm not gonna like go and stack them and see what they look like, but I just think these look so cool. The idea of the warm, cool, and neutral tone discs I think was a very good call by my mom, although the cool tone just looks pretty much black. I'm very excited for this to harden up so I can actually see my palette all put together, stacked together, and I actually get to using it because, I don't know, I just really, really love this concept and I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it. I really did manage to get like all of my most used colors in this thing, so I'm like set to paint 
anytime, anywhere I want with this thing. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've knocked over these lids like an idiot while they've been printing, but I got 10 lids printed and I figured I would start there and get these all taped up so that I can actually start pour painting them. All right, I've got the palette lids all taped up. I also have some travel palette lids that I want to repaint, so I'm gonna do that at the same time. And I actually also already have quite a decent amount of paint already mixed up. Uh, this was from like last week, a pouring session that I did for palettes. And so I'm going to stir this up and try and see how many of these are still workable. You know, add a bit more pouring medium if they seem a little, uh, too stiff in texture for what I generally like to pour with. Uh, and yeah, then just go ahead and start getting all of these painted. had to share this because it's like so satisfying but I got the entirety of the 10 sets printed which again like the lids it's truly mortifying how frequently I can knock these over and have palette pieces flying all over my studio um, but anyway I'm very happy that I have the sets all printed now honestly it's a pretty lengthy process because every individual like type of piece prints separately so because I wanted the lids all painted I printed 
printed all of the lids together and then all of the bottoms got printed together but then the mixing dishes print separate from the well pieces so this is a lot of print jobs here but they just look so cool and I'm just so happy with how these are turning out and wanted to share the nice uh, evenness of the sets before they get all finished off with the lids and stuff on them once those are all dry and resined and stuff. So it's been about 24 hours since I painted everything and I clearly have a desk full of palettes that I am now about to start resining but I did want to sort of share what they're looking like right now. I was pretty kind of worried about the sides of them because sometimes the pouring paint mixture doesn't really like sticking to the plastic uh, so I did sand them down and I'm very happy to see that it is a nice even coat of color on all of these. There's definitely like these would be white so there might be some white spots someplace but it's more of the natural drip it didn't like completely drip off and if you're wondering yes there are more than 10 because after i did the first round of them i had quite a lot of paint like i even grabbed my lid which this one yeah very obviously labeled mine not that i would mix it up because i didn't tape up the inside very well so it's a little painty uh but i had so much paint mixed up that i realized i could get four more lids printed if i had both of the printers that I've been using to manufacture these palettes. If I had both of those going, I could get four more lids done in a few hours. So I did that and then I painted those up as well. So I think, was that one of them? No, that one definitely was. And yeah, so there's a few more that you didn't see me paint. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get all of these resined now. Here are actually not all of the lids, there are some other ones over there, uh, but I figured I would show you my product photography setup because I don't think it's actually come up in any videos. So I first have, I made this, it's literally just a canvas board with the same vinyl that is on my desk because my desk is pretty rough looking now just from, you know, the wear and tear of using it all of the time and I figured a super easy way to make sure that I always had a nice clean background because I do obviously like the look of my desk in photos. I just stuck some extra vinyl that I had from the desk uh, onto the back of a canvas board and it works absolutely amazingly to the point that I actually have some other textures waiting to sort of do that little photography hack to to make myself some other backgrounds if I want them for products. Uh, but other than that, the thing with these lids, it probably looks like pretty even lighting right now, which yes, other than you can see the glare of that one uh, studio light umbrella, it looks good now, but half of the time these have like metallic colors and other things and they just look really dull if I leave it at the two studio lights that sort of create the ambient light in my studio. So I've been doing this 
candle light bouncing off of a reflector back on to these, which I'll turn this on. It's gonna blow out on this camera and completely mess with the white balance, so excuse that, but uh, that's what's been working really well. And then the metallics and glitter sparkles, all of that, they just look really nice and much more like they do in real life. That's honestly all I'm trying to achieve is to get them to be photographed in the detail that they actually look like they do in person, which even still I think they always look better in person, but we try. And also my camera that I'll be using, honestly I'd use the one that I'm filming on right now, but this is the newer one. It's a Sony a7C and I put a 50 millimeter macro lens on it so that you can get all the detail of the pores. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking pictures of all these lids, all of the other inserty bits and everything. It's a new product, so I have a lot of pictures to get done today. I guess I'll insert some of the pictures here so that you can see what this setup ends up looking like put to use. So got all of the pictures done. These are all now packaged together. Again, not all of the lids are here because I'm waiting on finishing printing some of the bottoms and inserts and stuff. So have some extra lids over there still that of course will get packaged up once those pieces are finished printing. But I did just want to show you once more what these all look like together. They're just so cool. I love how they look like little planets or moons or something. It's just so on brand and I don't know. I'm just really happy and excited with how these turned out and hope you all like them too, especially, you know, if you're in the market for a small palette. But that is going to be where I end this video. Of course, all of these are going to be in my store right now along with the DIY version if you're not into any of the poor lids or you know you just want to make your own the link will be listed in the top of the description box but thank you for joining me and seeing the process of creating these palettes and i will see you in my next video